Okay, so here we are at the EMEAS website, emeas.com, and we're going to have a look first of all at what an actual EMEAS presentation is like, just before we get into the, the building of it. So down the right hand side of the screen here we can see a little preview of a few different templates of EMEAS presentations. I'm going to choose firstly the infographics one here, and we're going to just take a little look at what this presentation is like. So flicking through it we get a, a real sense of what EMEAS is about, nice bold graphics and vivid colours, um, slick animations and, and very professional look. But this particular one you'll notice quite flat, um, it's just a scrolling presentation moving from one side to another and that's fine if that's what you're looking for. But EMEAS can also offer interesting 3D presentations, for instance this one, the city presentation. So in this presentation as we navigate through the slides we move through this virtual city. Um, just like in any other kind of presentation, we would be adding the content to this. We would be adding the text and the images, um, but EMEAS, the, the actual application, would then map those different elements onto this uh, travelling city landscape. So it just gives you an idea of how EMEAS is just creating those slightly different presentations, those interesting new ideas. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to actually use EMEAS is create an account. Um, I've done so, so I can just log in with my credentials. So just to add them into the screen here and click login. Uh, it's free to join EMEAS. There are some premium options available, but you don't need them. Uh, you can work fine with a free account to start with. To get started, the first thing EMEAS asks us to do is choose a template for our presentation. And uh, Now we had a look at a couple there a minute ago, but now we get an idea of just how many there are to choose from. There's quite a few, quite a good range. Um, to get a better idea of which one we want to use, we can hover our mouse over any of these little template icons uh, just to see a bit more uh, about what the presentation is like, how it's going to move from slide to slide, what the colour schemes are like, that kind of an idea. It's also fair to say that the name of each template gives you an idea of the kind of content that's going to be suited to it. So for instance you can see one there labelled finance so we know that it might work well with statistics or economics or that kind of an idea. But that said, um, there's so many customizable options within an EMEAS presentation that you're not limited. You can choose a presentation type that might not necessarily match your content and make it fit quite well. Uh, ultimately, I'm going to choose this infographics one, which we had a look at a minute or two ago. And then EMEAS asks us to choose our theme, our colour scheme for our presentation. So I'm going to choose this end one here. And after a few seconds, we're loaded into the EMEAS application proper, ready to start building our presentation. So EMEAS is designed and centred around these bold buttons at the top of the screen. It's very, very simple to get your head around. It doesn't have a steep learning curve. Um, most of the buttons themselves are self-explanatory, so it's fairly easy to navigate around the interface and know exactly how to add whatever you want. That said, handily, there's a little help icon to do by this question mark in the top right-hand corner that allows us to turn on a little overlay showing us exactly what each button does. If we're not sure, if we just want a little bit of a refresher as to where everything is, and what they do, we can turn on that little overlay um, just to refresh our memory. As well as that, in the centre of the screen, you can see a little uh, tutorial video box, and we can scroll down through that. These videos will either help us get started or improve upon a presentation we've already made. And we can click on any of the elements to add a and shape. Then choose to Simply just select one of the many options available to do, in the shape um, gallery. Whatever point it is the video is making. So moving on then, uh, we're going to start actually editing our presentation properly now. So EMEAS has added in a title slide for us to start with. And you can see that as we hover our mouse around this title slide, um, some of these elements have this outlining box around it. That denotes an editable element. So here, for instance, I've double-clicked on an edit editable element. I've deleted out the text that's already there, and I'm going to replace that with my own title for this slide. Um, and that's really the, the what EMEAS is all about. Um, they've already pre-arranged and pre-populated these to give you the best idea of style and choice, and we're just going to change that and, ch and, and replace that with our own things. Um, what I did there was just delete out an element that I didn't want just by simply hitting the delete key on my keyboard. Here you can see as I edit a, a, a little text box, it drops my text onto another line, which is not something that I want. If I click on that editable box though, I can use the little grab handles on the outside of the box just to pull that out a little bit, make it a little bit larger, and then click and hold my mouse to move it around and place it wherever I want it to be. 
and then again we can do the same with any of these elements like for instance the dates here I can double click on that uh, just to bring up a, a normal little text editor uh, and just change the date to suit um, whatever date my presentation is being made on or has been created on and that's our title slide finish then we've just taken the elements that were already there and changed them to what we wanted them to be so next we want to add our own slide to the EMEA's presentation. The first thing to note is we could, if we wanted to, start to subdivide our presentation out into different sections. It doesn't actually have any bearing on the final presentation, it's just for our own organisation. I'm not going to do that though, I'm just going to straight into adding another slide. And to do that I want to click the slide button in the top left hand corner. You can see then the wide variety of slide templates that are available, each of them uh, offering maybe a different, uh, a different style choice or a different element to it, whether it's pictures or graphics. For our first slide though, I just want to add text. So I'm going to choose a slide that has text in it and simply click it to insert it into my presentation. From there, we're just going to do exactly the same thing again. We can click on each of these individual elements that we want to change um, and alter them to meet our own needs. So I can go in and change a number uh, of the slide just to keep it in presentation order. I can change the title, copy and paste in my own title, and do exactly the same with these blocks of text. Just drop in my own text that I want to, uh, to have on this particular slide. From there, just as we would do in PowerPoint or Word or any other um, tool like that, we can change various elements of that text. We can change the colour uh, by using this toolbar along the top of our screen. Um, alternatively, we can make our text bold if we want to, uh, or underline it, or choose to make it italics if we want. We can highlight the text and add a bullet point to it if we want it to change it into more of a list style. Um, uh, doing that of course to both just to keep it the, the standard look. Alternatively we can uh, for instance use the slider up here in the rotation uh, icon to spin our text around, set it at an angle, and choose a slightly different style choice there just to uh, highlight the, the bit of text that we're, we're working with. And of course not forgetting that we can change the size of the font as well. Just make it a little larger or smaller to either um, make it a bit clearer the point we're making or uh, set a point more in the background. Once we're happy with it we can move on then to your next slide. So for this one what I want to do is add an image. So I'm going to choose a template which has an image within it that's going to lend itself well. Now of course as with everything um, Emias has kind of pre-populated uh, this with an image, so all I need to do is select that image and hit my delete key and my keyboard just to remove the image that's already there. To replace that with my own image then, all I need to do is come up to the image icon at the top of my screen, uh, click the browse button, um, and then just find on my computer where the image that I want to use is. That might be in uh, my desktop or uh, on a USB drive or wherever it might be. Um, but as soon as we find the image that we're using, it's just a matter of clicking on it and double clicking on it or clicking open just to add it into your presentation. Just like everything else then, that becomes an editable element. So I can resize that with grab handles or I can click and hold it to move it to whatever position that I want to put it into. Then of course because there's pre-populated text on this slide as well, I'm going to want to do the same again. Double click on that text and replace that with the text that I want. And slowly but surely we're building up our EMEA's presentation, creating it into the shape that we want it to be in. Okay, next we want to add a video to your presentation. So I'm going to choose a completely blank slide here and just put our video in the centre of it. The video icon is at the top of the screen and we need to choose whether we want our video to loop over and over again or whether we want it to autoplay as soon as the slide is moved to. The slight limitation now with EMEA is, is that we can only use YouTube videos so we need to find a link to a YouTube video, copy and paste that in and click add. Once that video is in though, again like everything else, it's an editable element. We can click on the grab handles to make it bigger or smaller and move it to the position we want it to be in. Another really important point um, about presentations now is that often we want to be able to add web links to link out to an external website. Um, so we're going to do that now. First thing though is uh, I've chosen my template and I just want to replace that with my own text. 
Now here I want to be able to either show my users or from me myself during the presentation to link out to this, this source. So what I'm doing is I'm highlighting the text and I'm clicking the link hyperlink button here in the toolbar at the top. All I have to do then is uh, copy and paste in the hyperlink to the website that I want to go to, in this case the Northern Ireland uh, Environment Agency, and just click add, just to change that into a hyperlink that's going to allow us and other viewers to link out to that site. Okay, you might also want to add a chart into your presentation um, if you're working with statistics or numbers. So I'm going to choose something that lends itself well um, to adding a chart in. Now, if you want, you can see here that, um, that the chart slide that I've chosen already kind of has an interesting graphic in it. And if you want to, you could just use that graphic and just change it to meet your own needs. Uh, you could change the labels for each of the, the little um, columns here, um, or the rows, sorry. Um, or you could um, multiply, duplicate these little uh, people infographics just to change that to whatever you want. What I'm going to do though is highlight the whole lot and just click my delete key just to remove that completely. I want to add in my own chart. To do that I click the chart button at the top of my screen. And then I choose the type of chart I want. I'm going to start off by adding a table. Amy has then asked me to import data. So I'm going to choose uh, data from a spreadsheet that I have here, an Excel spreadsheet. And just copy that data from Excel and paste it into the required place in eMaze. And you'll notice that generates my little um, table of data. When I click Add then, my table is dropped into my eMaze presentation and I can move that to the right place that I want it to be in. I'm going to delete that out though now and I'm just going to add a slightly different one. So instead I'm going to add a column chart here. And exactly the same process again. Paste in the data from Excel, click Add, and there uh, is my, my new chart. I can resize that by clicking on the grab handle in the corner and move that to the exact position that I want it to be in. And that's my chart added to my EMEA's presentation. What we want to do next now though is we want to have a little preview of it. So I'm going to click the play icon in the top right hand corner. We can now use these left and right arrows to navigate through our presentation and see it just as either we ourselves would or our viewers would see it at the time. Um, it's good to do this just to get an idea of exactly how your presentation works. We can interact with the videos that we've added into your presentation, uh, like we're doing here, um, which is good as well, just to make sure that it's working in the way as intended. We can interact with the links that we've input into our presentation. Uh, and we can just get a real feel for how it's going to look for us, um, either on the day that we're presenting it or afterwards. Now what we can also do is we can share our email's presentation by clicking this little share icon. That allows us to, first of all, either make our email's public or private. Do we want anyone to be able to see it or just those we choose? We can invite others to collaborate on our email's presentation by entering their email and clicking collaborate. We can distribute it out to social networks, or alternatively we can distribute it via email by entering colleagues or students' email addresses into this email bar here and clicking send to distribute the presentation out to them. Alternatively, we can get the link to your email's presentation and distribute it ourselves, um, copy and paste it onto uh, a website or somewhere. Um, finally, what we can do is we can copy this little embed code, which is going to let us put it into somewhere like a blog or a website. And we're going to show that now just by moving to a VLE. So here's our VLE page. What I've done is I've copied and pasted that embed code and added that into our VLE. And with that, you can see that the EMEA's presentation just sits itself nicely um, in the VLE here. And all of the elements can be interacted with in exactly the same way as it would be if we were presenting. And to me, this is the real strength of something like EMEA's, um, because you can see how, after the presentation is done, being able to host it like this is invaluable.